It's a Mad Queen. Welcome to my lair, the Queen's Lair. This is going to be a deep dive guide into the dragon for the Christmas event. I'm not going to be doing a showcase of my team, not in this video at least, but I will be releasing one either later today after this one or tomorrow. This is really going to be me going over in detail both of the dragons. There are two, if you didn't know that. I'm only saying that because I did have a few members within my community that were not aware of that. They both do different things, but they do work very similarly. And I'm going to go over the best heroes that you can use on each of those teams, some strategy options. Let's go ahead and hop over into the dungeon. The first boss is called the Furious Dragon, and the second one is the Blazing Dragon. The big thing here is that both of these dragons are able to get dragon armor. Dragon armor is going to give the dragon a 10% bonus on damage reduction that can stack up to five times, which means they can grant themselves 50% bonus damage reduction, and that's huge. If you get to the point where the dragon has that much, you're going to notice that you're not really doing very much damage overall. So for the Furious Dragon, you are able to remove one of those stacks for each negative effect that you place on it. Fury, its next ability, gains Infuriation at the end of each round, which stacks infinitely. The damage is increased when there are fewer enemies alive. So, if he kills one of the heroes on your team, then he's going to start doing a lot more damage to the other ones that are left over. And you'll notice very quickly if one dies, the rest are most likely going to be gone on the next round. Infuriation on the Furious Dragon is going to gain 150% bonus attack and 20% bonus resistance that cannot be removed. Draconic Aura deals damage to all enemies and applies Ignite for two turns. Lava Lash deals damage to all enemies with a 50% chance to apply Stun for one turn. 50% chance is really big, and I've had quite a few instances where I've had three and even sometimes four heroes, all of them on my team, stunned. And then in Annihilation, it deals significant damage to all enemies and the damage scales with the number of infiltration stacks. For this boss, you're going to want to use heroes that are able to put a lot of debuffs on the boss. You're also going to want to use heroes that can place invincible and immunity, heroes that can do a cleanse, heroes that can do a significant amount of healing. What is unfortunate about this event is that it is really aimed towards later game players, and it's not very f friendly to newer or, or honestly free-to-play players either. I'm going to take you back to the hero section and go over a few heroes that are going to be good options for here. So like I said, you do want to use heroes that are able to put either invincibility or immunity. Some good choices for that are going to be either Jossicat, Celestial Kane, Mary, heroes that can do somewhat of a cleanse. The best is going to be Blackhorn. His totem is going to do a cleanse every round before anybody takes a turn. So even if all four heroes get stunned, he's going to be able to cleanse that off so that they can all still take a turn. And it really just negates the stun overall. He also has a debuff, attack down, that he's able to place on the boss, which is going to help bring the amount of damage reduction the boss has down. You could also look to use heroes like Florence. Florence would be good. She's able to put increased damage on the boss, give extra turns. She does a ton of healing. And if you have heroes like Abaddon or Adonet, those are both heroes that are able to place random stats down on the boss. And that's going to be a huge help. I believe both of them are able to do that with their first ability. So that means that they're able to, every single turn, guarantee that you're putting two debuffs on the boss. If you put a curse set on them, they're going to have a little bit extra of a chance to place even another one on top of that. If you can use heroes 
that can give themselves invincibility. That's also going to be another really good one. Not necessarily just for this boss, but for both. That's going to be Fiona, Bella, Darcy. Um, the three of those are really good about supporting themselves generally. If you're going to use Darcy, she is going to need to be used with William to get the most benefit out of her. But Bella is going to be good because she's able to put increased defense on the boss and it doesn't matter what its resistance is. They cannot resist it. So it'll automatically go on for two turns. Another really, really, really good hero here is going to be Raven. Raven is excellent here because she's able to deal more damage overall depending on how many debuffs are on the enemy. So whenever you have all of these heroes that are stacking up a ton of debuffs on the boss, use her to come in last as your main damage dealer and destroy <laughs> and do a bunch of damage overall. I'm serious. It's crazy. You should try it out. Even if you have heroes that are much better, it's just a lot of fun to watch and see an elite hero deal that kind of damage in general. You could also use heroes like Jacob. He's able to give some shielding, himself a bonus turn. He also provides a few debuffs. Scarlet has bleed. So if there's a hero that has bleed, they're going to be good because that's considered a debuff. And Jacob would be good here as well because he has Intrigue. It stacks up to 20 times. Um, so obviously that is quite a few debuffs. I would highly recommend though, if you do have heroes that can, heroes that can grant random stats down to use those over Jacob here because Jacob is gonna be actually a really good option for the next boss. So I'll go back and we can take a look at the second boss more in detail. The Blazing Dragon, as I was saying earlier, also gets Dragon Armor. And the way you can remove this is by dealing damage to it with basic abilities. Its Fury is a little different. It's going to gain 150% bonus attack and 100% bonus ignite damage that cannot be removed. So this is where you really, really want to use heroes that are able to put immunity or invincibility up because you're not going to be able to cleanse it off per se. And then the last thing that's different with this boss is Annihilation. It's going to deal damage to all enemies and applies Ignite for two turns. The damage scales with the number of Infuriation stacks. So going back to look at the heroes again, on the first boss, you want to be able to use heroes that can put random stats down. Those are going to be really good and put them in a curse set so that they have an extra opportunity to take more turns. Also, you want to use heroes that can help you survive. If you have a limited number of heroes that can either put immunity or invincibility up, you want to save those for the second boss over using them in the first one. If you do have multiple choices, it's going to be a good option to try to Put that on both teams but overall you're going to need that more on the second boss you can also look to use heroes that cleanse on the first boss because you're not going to be able to use cleansing heroes on the second boss cleansing heroes are going to be heroes like blackhorn he's going to be really good for cleansing and survivability he also has a debuff on his a1 which is really nice you could use brand he's not going to be quite as effective as blackhorn and on the second boss you want to use heroes like Jacob. Jacob is going to be a really good option because obviously he has the ability to perform many basic attacks at once. So he would be good. Opal would be good. Boo Lin would be okay. Marion Shadowblood would be a good choice. As far as supports, Florence, William. I mean, if you have Florence and William, put them together. It's going to be big. I promise you put both of them together on a team and have two damage dealers, you're going to do pretty well. Bella's going to be a really good option. She's able to put minus 
increased damage taken on the target or the boss, and it cannot be resisted. It lasts for two turns. Whereas if you use Flarence to put increased damage taken on the boss, there is a possibility it can be resisted. The same with Hector. And of course, Hector is going to stop landing his way before Flarence does, or I would hope so. My biggest piece of advice is going to be use two support heroes. Honestly, you need to be able to survive to deal damage, and both of these dragons deal a significant amount of damage in general. You want to be able to survive or else it's pointless, unless you have some like mega whale account where you're able to pump out a lot of damage within the first three rounds of the dragon because eventually the boss is going to start putting up a lot of resistance if you're not able to keep that under control and it's going to start dealing a lot more damage that cannot be removed overall you could also look to use brand the brilliant he would not be a bad option as far as his rage goes he would also get an extra turn I hope this was able to help you guys. If I was unclear about anything, leave a comment below. I would be more than happy to answer any questions you have. Or if you have something to add that I missed, I would be more than happy to see that as well. If you're a new or experienced player, join my growing Discord community. It's a really good place for beginners to ask for advice and experienced players to share advice. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.